In this video, I would like to show the programming of a Visual Logic controller. For that, click the Tools menu in the menu bar. Then select DDC, then Visual Logic from the submenu. Now you can see, Microsoft Visio has opened now, and at the same time, a blue window named Alert and Visual Logic opened along with Visio. This blue window opened only when the Visual Logic menu opened in the menu bar of Microsoft Visio. Now, click on the Visual Logic menu on the menu bar and click on the new drawing. Now, another window has opened, in which you can read device type selection. Please select the type of device you would like to program. Here I am selecting VLC. I am going to prepare a logic program for a unitary controller or a normal visual logic controller. Then click OK. This program can be used for the visual logic controllers like VLC 1600, VLC 853, VLC 16160, VLC 1188, VLC 550, VivHSD, etc. Now you can see, the platform or window to write the program logic for the VLC has opened. On the right side corner of the window, you can see another window named, Pan and Zoom. This window we are using to zoom in and out the pages of the program and easy to move in the pages. On the left side, we can see the library of the functional blocks to write the program. We drag the functional blocks to the pages to write the program. In the right side bottom corner, we can see three items, one table, a controller box mentioning device settings, and two flags mentioning EON. First of all, we can check what is this table for. This table is to enter the information of the program. We must add the selected rep job so that, the program will be saved in that rep job. Then, we can give the program name. Either we can give the system name which we are about to control through the program or we can use the device instance number of the VLC. Secondly, the device settings block, double click on that, and now a window has opened in the name of device settings. Here, we can enter the details of the settings. There are different settings, let me show the basic setting to be done in any program. On this page, general, we must set the program units. For example, if you want to measure the temperature in Fahrenheit you need to select English. If it is in degrees Celsius you need to select metric in this column.
Next, you can see a column for microset detection, here if you are using a thermostat for VLC it must be enabled. So, we can use input 0 for the microset thermostat. Otherwise, keep it disabled. Next page you can see analog input setup. If we have any analog inputs connected to the VLC we can configure that particular input for that device. Analog inputs like temperature sensors, pressure sensors, flow sensors, humidity sensors, CO2 sensors, etc. When clicking on the type column of the particular input you can see five settings. First one, counts for digital inputs and the second one is scaled for scaling the inputs for the transmitter signals like 0 to 10 volt DC, 0 to 5 volt DC, and 4 to 20 milliamps, etc. Third and fourth are for the temperature sensors. We can use either 10K or 3K thermistors as temperature sensors in the VLC controllers. The fifth one is scaled two points if you don't know how to calculate and enter a sensor range into the controller. You can choose this option. When you choose this, another window opens there we can enter the details of the controller which we are using the input signal type we can provide the scaling data as shown in the video. I am here entering the 0 to 100 range for a 0 to 10 volt DC signal, then click OK. Now you can see the values has calculated and entered in the range columns automatically. All these inputs can be configured in this way. Finally, we need to click apply at the bottom of the window and then close the window. If you open that window again you can confirm the parameters are entered for that particular VLC. The third block with flags is for end of normal sequence. We must enter the last sequence number for the functional blocks which we are going to use in the program. Here, I am entering 9999 which is the last sequence number. If you didn't set this number program cannot read by the controller. Now I am going to show some functional blocks we are using commonly in the program and their use. First one, IN, block. This block we are using to enter the inputs in the program. Drag the block from the library to the page and now click on that block to enter the details of the input. Now a window open named shape data. We must enter the input address in the output column of the block. If we are using digital input in input 1, we must enter bi-1. And the description I am giving, status, or fan status, then click OK. The next one is the out block. In this block we can enter the details of the outputs which we are going to use. 
Here I am going to enter BO1 and fan command as descriptions. Now, the two commonly used blocks are the AND gate block and the OR gate block. Both these gates have two inputs and one output. In the AND gate block when both inputs are ON, then only the output will be ON, otherwise the output will be OFF. We can enter the details of the inputs and outputs as shown in the video. Whereas in the OR gate, if any of the one input is ON, the output will be ON, and if both inputs are OFF, then the output is OFF. More details about the programming and its construction will be described in the coming video.